Good morning, everybody, and welcome to what is day three in Japan. Andrea and I woke up really early this morning and actually left our hotel. As you can see, I'm on a Shinkansen right now. We are actually going to Kobe to try out some Kobe beef. What's the name of the restaurant that we're gonna go to? Side Dining. We're gonna go to Side Dining. I don't wanna call it like a luxury lunch, but the quality of Kobe is really, really high. And this place is notorious for having some of the best Kobe beef that you can get. If you include walking to and from the station and time spent on the bullet train, it takes a little over three hours to get from Shinagawa, Tokyo to side dining in Kobe, Japan, which is pretty awesome considering you're gonna be traveling at over 180 miles per hour for quite some time. The train has Wi-Fi, so you can use your laptop and phone to watch movies or browse social media, and the bathrooms on board are very clean. So overall, traveling by rail is a great experience. It's very relaxed and convenient, but easily the coolest part about this trip is if the weather is just right, you'll get some pretty amazing views of Mount Fuji. Generally speaking, in the spring and winter is the best time to see the volcano. Otherwise, it tends to be covered by clouds. Even then, from the Shinkansen, you come to realize how truly massive this mountain is. Because oftentimes, even if most of Fuji is covered up by clouds, the very top of it tends to stick out. Once you arrive in Kobe, it is about a 400 meter walk or four to five minutes to get to side dining. To be honest, we didn't spend a lot of time exploring the city, but I couldn't help but feel emotional as we walked towards the restaurant because I remember when Kobe Bryant passed in January of 2020 in that dreadful helicopter accident. I remember how shocked and saddened I was and so many others were across the globe. So I made a promise that one day we would come to Japan and eat Kobe in his honor. And as trivial as some might think this gesture to be, side dining is one of the only restaurants on earth that could honor Kobe in such a memorable way. They serve award-winning A5 grade Kobe and Wagyu beef, which is considered by many to be the best in the world. Please keep in mind that this restaurant does require a reservation, which can be made either online or by calling in. We actually got there at the same time as two others, and they were unfortunately turned away because all reservations were taken. This restaurant is extremely small. It only seats 28, which is a blessing and a curse because it feels very homey, but you might have a difficult time booking it from time to time. So please keep this in mind. Our chef started us off with a delicious roast beef appetizer. It was two thinly sliced pieces of meat in a thick white sauce. As you can tell by the reddish color, they were cooked medium to medium rare. Also, I had a carrot and green starter that had a very nice dressing on it. The yellow drink that you see is plum wine, which is my sister's favorite. And my clear drink is, yes, you guessed it, apple soda, because I'm a child. It really doesn't matter how fancy a meal I have, I'm getting some form of apple juice. It's just my vibe, okay? While we were nibbling on that, the chef went ahead and brought out the round and marble steak that we had ordered as he began preparing our vegetables and colorful salad. Andrea and I ordered course B as opposed to A because it comes with more food, including the hors d'oeuvres that you just saw and some dessert at the very end of the meal. Both steaks looked as advertised. There was so much marbling on both. I remember thinking to myself, wow, so this is what all the hype was about. The meat looked truly picturesque, and I was finally starting to better understand what they meant when they said this is the highest quality beef in the world. Next, we were brought pea soup, or their seasonal vegetable pottage. It was light, warm, and airy. They did a fantastic job so that this soup didn't hit too hard with an overwhelming taste of peas. I'm not a pea lover, in fact, I go out of my way to avoid the vegetable, but this soup was very well seasoned, with a nice smooth texture. I even think mine had a smiley face in it. While I was slurping down my soup, our chef was preparing some grilled seasonal vegetables to go with our Kobe beef. Just so you're aware, the vegetables that side dining serves change with the seasons. So whether it be winter, summer, spring, or autumn, the vegetables on your plate will always change. We came in the summer, so we were served turnip, onion, mountain potato, squash, and green pepper, all of which was nicely grilled with a slight char which was an amazing touch. The fragrance of the vegetables wafted throughout the restaurant. This, in addition to the Kobe beef, made for a most colorful presentation. I almost didn't want to eat my food because everything looked so perfectly positioned, but I digress. Side Dining did a great job not only selecting sides that merged perfectly with the Kobe beef, but truly showing the artistry involved in preparing such a meal. 
Everything was specifically designed to accentuate the beef and keep it center stage, but simultaneously leave a profound and lasting impact of its own. Even the Andean rock salt with its minerals and mellow and gentle flavors, in addition to the ponzu sauce with its citrus and soft sourness, are designed to bring out the clean and clear flavors within the beef. And let me tell you, they succeeded at this on all fronts. I was tasting flavors I never had before. I have to give my experience of side dining a 10 out of 10. This was easily the best beef I've ever had with its soft texture and juicy rich marbling. Also, our chef was such a showman. He was kind, personable, and had a number of funny stories to tell. I could tell that this was a lot more than just a job to him. It was a lifestyle, and it wasn't just simply something that he did to make ends meet. This man truly loved what he did, and that made me happy. I can truly appreciate a foodie at heart, so thank you for that. My sister said that she thoroughly enjoyed the dessert as we began to wrap up our meal. She loved the ice cream, and I thought that the ice cold coffee really hit the spot right before we went out into the sweltering Japan heat. Also, the strawberry shortcake and brownie were sweet and perfectly portioned after such a large meal, so I didn't feel like I had to be rolled out of the restaurant or anything like that. If you're interested in ever visiting side dining, their hours of operation are Monday to Sunday, from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. for lunch, and 5 to 9 p.m. for dinner. According to their website, which is readable in Japanese and English, they only close on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, which is really convenient. Well, I think that's all that I have for you all for day three in Japan. Day four, we'll be exploring Nagoya and Nagoya Castle, and day five, we will be in Yamanashi chilling with the owls. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please feel free to drop a comment down below. I love talking to you guys. Oh. And like always, thanks for watching. Kobe, this one was for you.